Music Excel Worksheet Scales, Intervals, Modes, and More Constructing the Intervals by Modes Table Part of the Worksheet here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you might want to begin back there. However, you can start from this point if you so choose, possibly looking at this from a music theory standpoint, constructing the tables either in Excel or possibly with pen and paper, the construction of the tables being a useful exercise in and of themselves. This being one of the most useful tables other than the actual fretboard tables themselves, which will be comparing and contrasting the different modes and the intervals related to those modes. If you do have access to this workbook, there's various tabs down below. The general idea being we have the example tab, which is the end result, the finished product that we will be working towards. And then the number tabs will correspond with the number of the presentations where we work on that part of the entire worksheet. Let's go back to the example tab to see what we will be doing. We'll be constructing this worksheet and this is going to be, again, one of the most useful worksheets because it's going to be listing out the intervals by modes, allowing us to compare and contrast similar modes, such as the major or Ionian scale to the modes most similar to it, those modes which have a major third, the major modes, Lydian and Mixolydian, and the minor scale or Aeolian mode, to those modes that have similarities to it, such as having a minor third, and then we can look at the differences and similarities. This is really quite useful. Many people actually start to visualize the guitar by intervals, which is actually quite practical because that allows you to switch from one position or one mode to another in the same place on the guitar if you know the differences between the intervals. So we'll, we'll dive into that. Let's do a quick recap of what we've done thus far to get here and then where we will be going after we construct that table. We have first built our musical alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but we've got the half steps in there. So A and then the half, I'm sorry, A and then A sharp or B flat. I'm representing that with a lowercase A, B for the sharps and flats. We also numbered then the notes from 1 to 12. This is the absolute numbering. I think it's useful for our construction here. We're going to use this in Excel, but we also, I also think it's quite useful to learn the absolute numbering system related to the notes, which we need to keep separate from other numbering systems. We also then mapped out the modes. There are seven of them. We put them in a table. Also, once again, using, in essence, an absolute numbering system for the modes numbering them from the perspective or relation of the major or Ionian scale. So I'm going to say if I refer to mode number four, I'm referring to the Lydian mode, even though it might not be in the fourth position when looking at other modes, but from an absolute position, that is a useful thing to do. We're using the key of the perspective of the major or Ionian scale to then orientate the other modes compared to it. And then we looked at the intervals. Now the interval table is going to be very important to what we are doing now. So let's look at this in a little bit more detail. You will recall that what we did here is we just said there's 12 notes in the musical alphabet. And now what we are doing is we're going to we're going to number each of those distances which you can think of as similar to like distances in a ruler for example so in other words we can say we're at point zero we move one step one half step which is equivalent to like an inch on the ruler we can label that a half step but we can also label it a minor second so the minor second needs a half step we could then go two steps away which we could call two half steps or a whole step Sim those are the same units of distance, but we can also call it a major second. So, and the major second is what we're going to use now because those intervals give us an added level of description when describing them in relation to the scale because the second now is not referring to the two units of half steps, 
but rather to the second position in the scale that we are looking at. And I can add another bit to that, which I'm gonna put a two in front of it, giving us the fact that it means two half steps and it's a major second. So if I go three steps out, so, so, so now we're gonna say we're, we're at three steps out. What, is, what does that mean? Well, it could be a half, three half steps. It could be a whole step and a half step, but we can also call it a major, I mean, a minor third. So I'm gonna call it three because that's gonna be the number of steps and a minor third. Now it gets confusing when I go to four, that could be labeled as uh, four half steps, or it could be two whole steps that we can say, or we could say, well, it's a whole step and two half steps that would all get us to four. We can also call it a minor third, which is confusing because the three might lead us to think that it's three half steps because half steps are our baseline unit. But what we're trying to do with these terms is boil down to as small a phrase as possible while still packing in as much information as we can. So the three is representing the third position in a scale typically. And the, the, the sorry, this is a major third, the capital M major third tells us that it's four steps away. Now that's what a lot of people miss because they, they lose the units of half steps. So I'm gonna to refer to it as a four, giving us the units in terms of the equivalent of inches, half steps for us, and the major third, which gives us the three, which usually indicates the position in the scale that we're talking about. And the major third, the fact that it's a major third means that it's four steps. But again, because the four isn't explicit in the name, people often forget that. And if you lose that piece of information, things get quite confusing. It doesn't seem to make sense. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna use these, these intervals. Now then we looked at the modes. Now in the modes, we used another interval name. We just called them whole steps and half steps though, because in this case, we're not comparing to the root note. In this case, we're comparing to every note as we go through the scale. So we go from one whole step to two, two whole step to three, three half step to four, four whole step to five, five whole step to six whole step, and then half step to get back home again. This is the formula that results in us getting seven notes in, we usually start off with our major scale, um, in our major scale out of the 12 notes total. But of course we can use the same formula looking at it from different perspectives starting on the second note and because this formula just repeats or you can imagine it going around in a circle or a spiral then we're just going to get seven notes that are just in a different order and and we have that's how we get to the seven different modes which is taking the same pattern i've repeated it twice out to locrian it's just taking the same pattern and then and then starting at every point within that pattern we then mapped out the relationship of each position to the major scale using the major scale as a key. So if I name each position, each of these modes are gonna have seven notes in them, which we're now gonna use relative positions, not absolute positions, which oftentimes we refer to as the first, the second, the third, as opposed to one, two, three. So if I say it's the second of the scale, then that second kind of gives you an indication that I'm talking about the relative position to the scale that we are in. And we're comparing those relative positions to the Ionian as our key. So when I look at the Dorian, I can say this is the first position in the Dorian, but I also know that that first position in the Dorian, if I compare it to the major, is the second in the major. And I can, we can give more information by converting these numbers to basically the, the scale uh, or the, the modes down here, which we did last time. I won't go into that in detail again because we talked about that before. Now what we want to do is take a look at the intervals, not by individual units between each step, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, but rather comparing the complete distance from the starting point of the scale, the one of, of the scale that we're looking at, to each position that we're going to. 
what are those what are those distances and that's what we're going to and we're going to use these terms then to say that and we're going to pull this information from this table up here and so we're pulling it from this table and so this this table down here will then map out for us the absolute distances from the root to each of the relative positions one two three four five six seven of each of the modes so that we can tie everything out as though we're measuring to again the relative position of the one in each of those points so now you can you can kind of imagine that we're trying like if you're trying to measure something we're picking a point and we're putting the tack for example in the paper right there and you got a string tied to it for example and we're trying to measure everything from that point where we put the tack right because that's what we're going to label as relative position number one and look at all of the other positions relative to it and measure the distances in half steps then naming each distance in half steps that we can have giving them their own names the names being constructed primarily from the major scale and then deviating from that for the notes that aren't in the major scale okay so hopefully that'll make more sense once we start to construct it let's let's do it let's go over here and we're going to say this is going to be the i'm going to call this the header of the intervals from first note in scale in half steps all right so then i'm going to make this black and white so i'm going to put it all the way across here i'm going to do both of these let's do home tab font group making it black and white and then i'm going to once again label this way the just one two and then bring it down to seven i could do it this way i could say this equals this one up here it's going to be the same kind of structure of the table and then copy that down and there's seven i'm going to make that black and white home tab font group black and white okay so there we have that and then i'm going to put the same modes by saying this equals the ionian up top it's going to be the same ones that's equivalent to the major scale put my cursor on the fill handle drag it to the right so it goes out to the locrian home tab alignment and let's center that okay so now what i'm going to do is we're just going to say what are the distances in half steps and and this hopefully will make more sense because we're thinking of like units like in inches like a ruler how many inches in in other words half steps is it to get from first position to first position well it's going to be zero right how many half steps is it to go from position one to position two and so on where are we going to get that information well we have our formula up top so here's our formula this is how we got the 12 notes and converted that into a seven note scale we took uh, uh, a, a whole step from the root position a whole step a whole step a half step a whole step a whole step a whole step and a half step that's the formula so that means that position one is just going to be a zero because we're going to start on whatever it is if i'm in the key of c and i play a c i didn't move anywhere from that first position it's just a zero i'm not measuring i'm at the point that i'm on but the next point away is going to be equal to two so now we've gone two away now note this is a little confusing here because that two really it's kind of in between these two because we're saying if i'm on position one it's taking two steps to get to the next position so this two kind of represents in between each note if i'm on a c i go two steps to get to the d and then two steps to get to the e and so on one step uh to the F, right, to the f and so on and so forth so so that means if i'm on position uh one if it was a c then it would be just zero and then i've got to go two steps to go from that one to the two so that would mean d is going to be two notes away then from the c if i started at c is my relative position which would be the position number one all right what if i go to the next one well all we're doing is saying now we're going to go two plus another two so instead of saying i'm going to go two away from the last position I'm going to say what's the total distance from the starting point 
which would now of course be four. So this is gonna be the sum of those two or four. Now, how can I do that with a formula down here that would make that as, as uh, easy as possible? Well, I could say that this is gonna be equal to the one above it, uh, the two plus the next step, which is gonna be this two, right? And then the next position is gonna be, if I'm, how far is it to go to position four? Well, it's gonna be this two plus two plus one, which is gonna be five. I've already got to four. I was at two plus two is four. So I just have to add that one to it, which if I copy this formula down should do it because these are relative reference cells. So it's gonna take the one above it plus the next one. So now we're five units away. And then if I copy that down again, of course, it's gonna take the one above it plus the next one, which is gonna be boom right there. And if I was to add them up, it's gonna be two plus two plus one plus two, it's gonna be seven notes away. So therefore the fifth of an, of an Ionian is seven notes away. And if I copy that down, it's gonna copy down to the rest here. Okay, so then, so, so then let's just think about that for a second here, right? If we had the, the zero point, whatever note that we pick, if that's where we stick the tack in, right, as our measuring point where we're gonna start with, that is at point zero. And then we're gonna say, if we go to the second point in the scale, it's a distance of two half steps away. If we go to the next point in the scale, the third of the scale, how far is that away? Not from the two, the last place we were at, but from the original point where we're imagining we put the tack in, right? And where we're measuring from there. It's gonna be four half steps away, which you could call, you know, two whole steps if you want. But what we're gonna do is actually label each of those distances that we have zero through 12, you know, distances, give them their own names, which will correspond to the relative position, which in this case is gonna be a major third, right? If I go four steps away, then how far is that away in half steps from the point where I put the tack in? It's five half steps away. So we're gonna call that something like a perfect fifth, I mean, I'm sorry, a perfect fourth, which is confusing because the four represents the relative position in the scale, even though it's actually five units away in terms of our core unit of half steps. If I go to the fifth position in our major or Ionian scale, it's actually seven half steps away. We're gonna call it a fifth, a perfect fifth, because, because we're referencing the fifth point, but in terms of units it's seven units away and you could count those units in whole steps or half steps it's seven half steps you could say it's like two four six three whole steps and a half step right but we're going to label it this way we're going to label it with a perfect fifth which means seven half steps and then the sixth position in our major scale if I was to measure in half steps is nine half steps away, which we're gonna create a label for that, referring to the six of the relative position, even though it's nine units away, calling it a major sixth. And then the next one is gonna be, uh, the seventh position is 11 half steps away. All right, let's do the same thing for the Dorian. It's, always, it's also gonna be a zero to start off with. If we start on the Dorian, which is now at zero, and I look at my formula up top, we're just gonna say, all right, the next one is gonna be the same. It's gonna be zero plus the uh, two this time. And I can just simply copy that down and say, okay, so now it's just gonna be the same thing. It's gonna take the one above it, that two, plus the next step, which is now a half step, because these are offset, right? I'm starting on the second position, I'm starting here. And then, so there we go. So if I look at that, I could say, okay, that means for the Dorian, I'm gonna start at whatever the point is where I put the tack in, it's still gonna be zero. But when I go to the second position, it's still gonna be two steps away. If I go to the third position though, now because the Dorian is a minor mode, 
That's what defines it as a minor mode. The third is a minor third. It's only three steps away as opposed to the major third, which is a four step away. And you can see that up here because it would be the two plus one uh, would be the three instead of two plus two, which would be the four. And then if I go to the fifth, you can see it still has that perfect fifth or five notes away is the same as the major. Still, ha still, I'm sorry, the fourth is still a perfect fourth, which is five notes away. The fifth is still seven notes away. The sixth is is actually nine notes away, right? And then the and then the seventh is ten notes away as opposed to eleven notes away, right? And so then I can say, what about the this one? I'm going to say it's going to start Phrygian at zero. Same formula, so I can copy this across and copy that down. Say, so, all right, well the Phrygian is going to be the next one is actually a half step instead of the whole step, right? So now that one is different up top. So the second of the Phrygian, if I look at it from the perspective of a Phrygian, it is the second is only a half step away. The third is three notes away. So it still has a minor third as opposed to a major third, which is why it's a minor mode indicated by the small, uh, the lower case uh, number here. I can see that up top because one plus two is three. This one plus two is a minor, even though it's the other way around, three. And the two plus two is a major over here for the Ionian. So we can see that and we can say, okay, so then the fourth still has a perfect fifth and which is five, I'm sorry, the fourth still has a perfect fourth, which is five notes away. The fifth has a perfect fifth, which is seven notes away. The sixth now is different because it has the eight instead of the major, so it's the minor uh, uh, sixth. And then the seventh has different than the Ionian because it's the minor and it has the mi it's a minor mode and it has a different one. But notice that the main thing that makes it major or minor is this third position. These two are three, minor third, this is a four, major third. All right, let's do it to this one. We're gonna say this is gonna be the same thing for the Lydian. You can see it's a major mode. So we, if I copy that down, I can say, okay, now the second one here is a two. And then if I go to the third one, I've got another two again. That's why it's a major mode because I can see here it has, the, the second position is two away, but the third position once again is back to four units away instead of three. So now that's what makes the Lydian a major mode as opposed to a minor mode. And then for the for the Lydian four fourth position, we have a sixth and then we have the fifth. Notice the fifth is pretty constant in a lot of these, right? So now the fifth is seven notes away. And that might be one thing when you say it's a perfect uh, a perfect fourth and a perfect fifth gives you, you know, because those are gonna be the same in the major and the minor, and they might be the same in many of the modes as well. And so we have then the per but it's not a perfect fourth. The fourth is different. The fifth is still perfect fifth. And then the sixth is nine notes away as opposed, which is the same as the major. And then the seventh is back to 11 notes away. So we have the major seventh as opposed to the minor. And then we go again, let's do it again for Mixolydian. So I'm gonna copy this across and say da -da, Mixolydian and say da -da. And so now we're just taking this formula so we have a two up top. And then if I copy that down, so now we're at four. So once again, the third is four units away, which is equivalent to the major scale. That's what makes it a major mode as opposed to a minor mode. I'm gonna copy that down. And so we can see that four, by the way, up top, two plus two is gonna be the four up top in our formula. And so then the the now the fourth, is going to be a perfect fourth or five notes away. The fifth is still uh, seven, a perfect fifth, seven notes away. And then the sixth, nine, and then the seventh, which is strange for a major mode, has a 10, a minor seventh, as opposed to the normal uh, major seventh. So then we're going to go, okay, let's do the next one. This is our minor scale, the Aeolian. So if I copy that over, this is the second most familiar mode. And so this is the one that we might more likely compare 
these three because they have the minor third, minor third, which we compare to our most famous one that has a minor third, the minor mode or Aeolian. So now I can see here that we have, of course, the minor third. And then once again, we know that this one is a perfect fourth. So we expect that to be the same here on the major and minor. This one is a perfect fifth. We expect that to be seven notes away, be the same in the major and the minor. And then the six minor six, which is eight notes away as opposed to nine. And then the seventh, which is a minor seventh as opposed to the major seventh, 10 notes away. So now again, now that we, we see this is our, we could still see this Aeolian as being constructed as all the other modes are from the Ionian or major, even though, again, they're all just related. It's just a matter of perspective. But because this Aeolian is our second most popular mode to use, we can then try to compare the modes that are most similar to the Aeolian to it, meaning the minor scale and the minor modes, those all have a minor third, which gives it its, its the biggest feel, emotional impact on us in the scale typically. So it's useful to compare these two to this one and then compare these two major modes to this one. And then the Locrian is kind of the outlier, which is a useful mode to look at, but not usually the one we make a whole song in, for example, because there's a lot of tension in it. So then we're gonna copy this one over and say, let's copy that down. So this one, same concept, we're just copying the formula. And you can see that it also has a minor third. So you can think of it as kind of like a minor mode as well, but it also uh, has that weird uh, fifth. Here's the distinguishing factor from it. So the fifth is now a, a flat fifth, right? Whereas all of the other ones had a perfect fifth in it. And, and so that's gonna be the characteristic factor that makes it not just minor, even though it has a minor third, but minor plus diminished, right? Minor third plus a flat fifth. All right, so we've seen it in terms of, of units, our core unit of equivalent to inches or half steps. Now we're just gonna label each of those unit distances with its own name. So if you can understand the names, then that's a great tool because then it gives you an easy way to refer to something with as precise and as little language as possible. But if you don't understand the, the terminology, then you keep on wanting to convert it back to inches or half steps until you do understand so that you can actually map out what you're saying on the fretboard by just counting out the half steps. All right, so we're gonna go to the home tab, font group and make that bordered. So now I'm gonna copy this same thing down here and I'm gonna take these distances and give them their proper name according to this table. So I'm gonna look at the distances here, which we've labeled. So these are the, all of the distances that we can have on like the equivalent to our ruler, the 12 notes in the scale and we're gonna give it then their own abbreviated name, these names being primarily based off of the major scale, which are gonna have the capital letters and or the P, which stands for perfect, which you can kind of think of being in both major and minor most of the time, which is a convention, but it usually applies. And then, and then, any, and then anything that doesn't, and then the small m is gonna usually be in the minor with the exception of this funny one here, the minor second. And then uh, if it says something like, like a diminished, this one is the weird one where it's not in the major or the minor, okay? <laughs> so here we go. So those are some fun, kind of wonky names, but uh, that's what we have. The idea is sound, the naming convention possibly could have been better, but you know what? So we're gonna copy that and paste it down here. And then I'm gonna call this, I'm just gonna rename it to intervals from first note in the scale. And then I'm gonna have the same, it's got the same structure here. I'm gonna delete the meat, deleting the meat of it, take the meat. Where's the beef? You've deleted the beef. All right, so we're gonna put the different meat in, in there. It's gonna be higher quality grade uh, meat that we're gonna put back in there. 
All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use our good old XLOOKUP table again, taking this information and giving me back the, the name. So I'm going to say this is going to be equal, whoop, not there, que paso. And we're going to go down here, say this equals XLOOKUP tab. And then I want to look up this value, the corresponding value uh, in, in the table above, comma, where do I want to look it up in? I want to look it up in our table. We're going to have to go off screen here, so but I can still see the formula up top. I'm on the comma bit right there. I'm going to take these intervals. So I want you to find that interval. You're going to find the zero right there. And I want to make it absolute because when I copy the table, I don't want any of this table to move. Therefore, I select F4 on the keyboard. That puts a dollar sign before both the beginning part the, the letter and the number and the ending point, the table being defined by the first uh, cell in it and the last cell, none of them want to be moved. The dollar signs simply being code saying don't move those items. Then I'm going to say comma and I want you to find that zero and return to me this one, which is the abbreviation of a perfect first. And it also gives me the zero, which is representing the the number of units away which is zero units away because that's the point that we would be on measuring from selecting that f4 on the keyboard puts a dollar sign before each the beginning and end so that those will not move when i copy it down so there it is boom perfect first now when i copy this down the only one i didn't put dollar signs on is this first bit so that means that when i copy it it this cell is going to move to the right and it's going to move down relative to the table up top but the tables that i'm drawing from will remain the same because i've locked them in place with the dollar signs so i should be able to copy this down and across so if i copy it down boom pulls it down and let's copy it across and then let's check it copy it across with the fill handle that's as easy as it that's as easy as we can do it so if i look at the major scales then if i look at the major i'm going to say okay this one is zero we're going to call that a perfect first zero units away that's the point then we said that the next one is two half steps away what i'm going to call that then is the second is a major second that we're going to call it and the major second means two steps away but that two right there doesn't represent half steps it represents the relative position to the scale and the third this third in the Ionian scale, we're going to call that a major third. Now that three represent, represents the position in the scale, not the units. The units are actually four units away. And that's what we have to get in our mind. That's what's not being represented in this shorthand of, a, of like a major third. It's not telling you the number of units. So if you were trying to find the major third in on the guitar you you wouldn't really know what to do unless you realize that it was four half steps away otherwise you'll just memorize the shape on the guitar so a lot of times we'll do that but you want to you want to be able to see that the shape how many units and half steps the shape is away that way you can find everything and you can construct your chords and you can construct your scale all from these interval units Right, and so this one, the fourth note in the Ionian is a, a perfect fourth. A perfect fourth means that it's five notes away. That four doesn't represent the number of half steps. It represents the position in the scale. That's why I'm adding the five before it saying, hey, look, this is the number of units and half steps for a perfect fourth. A perfect fourth has five half steps. The fifth unit in the major scale is going to be a perfect fifth, which is actually seven half steps away. I'm going to abbreviate that by saying it's seven half steps in just our baseline unit. That's what P5 perfect fifth is. And then the next one is going to be the sixth part, which is going to be a major sixth. That is nine uh, units uh, away. That's why I put a nine in front of it. And then the seventh is going to be a major seventh, which by definition is 11 half steps away. So I'm going to make this because it's our baseline 
Uh, one, I'm going to make that green. Let's make this whole thing green. That's our most important uh, key that we tie everything out to the Ionian or major scale. I'm going to make these two, which are also major modes, light green, because these are the two scales that we're going to compare to. I'll, I'll make it here. I'll go like make it like this green maybe. So, so now that's basically saying I'm going to compare these two modes to this Ionian. I can compare all the modes to it. I can compare anything to anything, but it's useful for us to think of this as our baseline because that's just our convention in the West and most songs are using that as, and then we can see these as compared to it. So the Phrygian, you can say, well, it also has a, obviously a perfect first because that's where, wherever we're going to start, but it has a minor second, which is only one note, uh, one note away. And it has, I'm sorry, I, I, I highlighted the wrong one here. Let me unhighlight this one. That's not the other minor mode. Uh, duh, 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 duh. I want, this is the major mode over here. Let's highlight this one. What am I doing? All right, so now we're on Lydian is a major mode. So it has a perfect first. It also has a, a major second. And then of course, this is the defining factor between these three. They all have that major third. That's in essence what makes it a major mode. What's the difference? Well, this one has that weird diminished fifth. That's unusual, right? And then, and then it also has the perfect uh, it has the perfect fifth, it has the major sixth, and it has the the major eleventh. So you can see they're very similar. Like if you know the if you know how to finger something on the fretboard by interval, I can convert from the Ionian to the complementary mode uh, over here by just changing that interval, right? And that is really useful if you can visualize it that way most people just kind of visualize with shapes uh that's prob but if you can visualize how those shapes tie into these distances then that allows you a lot more flexibility to see what, and see if i look at the mixolydian i have the the perfect first the major second and obviously the major third because it's a major mode the perfect fifth uh i'm sorry the the yeah the perfect fourth the perfect fifth the uh, major sixth, and then it has a minor seven. So there's the differentiating factor for that mode. Now, the, the other one that's going to be important is going to be the, the Aeolian. That's the minor scale. So this is the second most important and popular mode. Let's make that like blue. And then these two, I could compare to the Ionian, which might be useful, but I'm going to say, let's take the Aeolian and compare that. So I'm going to say, boom, and say, D -d -d -d, and make this like a light blue, maybe like that. And so now I can say, okay, let's compare the Aeolian to, to the Ionian, the major and minor. So they both have a perfect first, of course, because that's just the starting point. They both have a major second. That's the weird bit because there is such a thing as a minor second, which you would think would be in the minor or Aeolian mode, but that's kind of like the outlier in terms of the numbering or the naming conventions. That minor second is funny because the Aeolian, the minor mode, the, the minor scale has a major second in it, but it has a minor third. There's the differentiating factor. So this is the most like emotional note in the scale, typically the third and the, o the Aeolian represents the most familiar minor third scale, which is the minor scale. It, ha it still has a perfect fourth, the same. It has a perfect fifth, which is the same. When it says perfect, that's what it kind of can mean in just a straight convention is usually the perfects mean it's going to be the same in the major scale and the minor scale or Aeolian or Ionian and, and Aeolian. But it has uh, the sixth is going to be different. We have a minor six versus a major six, eight notes away instead of nine notes away. And then a minor seven instead of a major seven. So the ones that say major and minor, except for the second, are the ones that are going to be different. The second is funny, right? The major, the major and minor third and then the perfects are the same. And then the major and minor sixth, the major and minor seventh, the most important note difference being the third, second most important, probably the seventh. 
and then you have that sixth of the differentiating factor. We can compare the two minor modes to the minor scale, otherwise known as the aeolian. Now, we could also compare the minor to our, our major or ionian, which is our primary key. This is our primary key, but these two, because they have that minor third, are gonna have the most, that's the most flavor, the, the strongest flavor in the scales. That means it's, these are gonna be more similar to the aeolian and so that's how we would usually compare it. We're going to say these things are going to sound more like the, the, the most common uh, scale that has a minor third, which is going to be the minor scale otherwise known as the Aeolian mode. So I could say the Dorian has the same perfect first. It has the major second. It's got the minor third. That's the, differenti that's the defining factor of the minor mode. It still has the perfect fourth five notes away. It still has the perfect fifth but it has a major sixth as opposed to the minor sixth for the aeolian so once i can map out the aeolian and it has you know the minor seven so once i can map out the aeolian if i can see each interval when i do the aeolian i can easily convert to the complementary mode of the dorian by just changing that interval in my fingering uh, similarly with the phrygian we have the same perfect first. We've got the, uh, the, the, the minor second this time. So it has that half step. And, but it, of course, has the minor third because it's a minor mode. It still has the perfect fifth. Uh, for perfect fourth, still has the perfect fifth. It's got still the minor sixth, but, and, and it has the uh, minor seventh. So the differentiating factor here being that second, which is a little, it is kind of weird when you play the Phrygian and you've got that half step from the from the root uh, to the second. And then you've got the Locrian, which kind of stands on its own, but is probably most easily compared to the Aeolian because once again, it has that minor third. So it's got the, the uh, perfect first. It's got that funny uh, minor second, which which does even though it says minor second versus major second, the minor scale has a major second in it. That's the weird one. It still has the minor third. That's why it's most similar to the minors as opposed to the major. It still has the perfect fourth, but it has that flat fifth. That's the really strange thing that gives it that tensiony sound when you play that flat fifth, because that means that fifth is going to be in the triad, meaning the first three notes when we think about the major minor minor major major minor diminished the fifth is the thing that's different making it diminished in the triad of the first uh the one three five uh but it's similar in every other respect to the aeolian which with with okay so with the one and the three so then it's got the minor six and uh the minor seven all right, so we're going to use this next time. So again, this table really useful if you start to actually see and you, you memorize the pattern on the guitar, but if you can actually start to see the patterns by interval, and then you can start to integrate the differences between these intervals, you can play complementary modes. And remember the way the modes work, we saw up top that I could see like the related modes meaning all of the modes have the same notes in it, playing all of the related modes, but often it's useful to play, say from, from like an A minor to an A major, for example. Uh, so, so, and, so in that case, you're playing like complementary modes, which you could start to map those out are easier to map out if you can start to see these differences and how they kind of fit into your fingering. But in future presentations, where am I going? I'm going to go back on over here. We're going to take that table and then we're going to start to build like the heart of our worksheet that we would use in practice on the guitar, making this bit, which is going to map out the notes and the scale, giving us a key so we can change this note to whatever we want to be playing on, which will then populate everything else automatically, giving us the relative positions the relative major minor and the 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 uh the intervals and then the chord constructions for each of them 
which we can then use to color code our fretboard. 